were self-coached? No, no, I've, uh, I was. Yeah, now I, uh, I'm part of a team in Seattle. Uh, I've got a we've got a coach and team there. No, it's been good. Uh, it's good to like have a coach, somebody to keep you honest. You know, I mean, I think especially when you're training alone, and if you're trying to coach yourself alone, like you have a lot of like, coach. We have a team in Seattle. Um, we have uh, about 15 people on the team. This is the routine. Yeah. Just Light stretching. Don't work right now, no, I just train. I wake up, still try to wake up, you know, around 7 a.m. Uh, get up in the morning and kind of like go through my routine of eating like a good breakfast, drinking coffee, really letting the body. Do you live in some camp or? No, I live in a, I live in a house with just a couple other, uh, one other guy on the team and then uh, two other individuals and uh, so we've got like four of us but it's not a team house, it's just uh, But the other guys are from the group or not? One of them is, so one of the, one of the other three is from the group um, and so it's kind of nice to have somebody from the group in the house but uh, we also have a little bit of a balance of people who are doing different things. Uh. Yeah, typically we meet at 10 o'clock uh, every day to train and that'll last usually from anywhere from two to four hours. Uh, I like to plan out my training like eight weeks in advance. You say you, that so, you like to plan them, so it right. means that there is some of your insight that you do, you're discussing with the coach, a guy, uh, what's the name of the coach? Uh, Danny Mackey. Danny Mackey? Mackey, yep. Mackey. So we, you tell him, listen, I, I need to know eight weeks ahead what I'm going to do? Or? Uh, I think it's, it varies from individual to individual, and I like to know that far ahead in advance, so like I've communicated that with him, but then once, we, once he knows that, then him and I will sit down usually eight weeks out, um, and then kind of go through a training plan. Uh, and usually he, he maps that out, and maybe I'll give a little bit of feedback that I have on things that I might really want or not want, uh, and then he'll kind of throw back at me kind of what makes sense uh, based on that, those preferences and What's stuff. What's his age? Uh, he's, I think, like 34, 35. So you're in a similar right? What's, what's I'm like 30, age? so he's, a, he's not much older than me. Okay. Right now, I mean, I was focused on doing well in cross country, so doing well uh, both at the U.S. Club Cross Championships and then here. Um, and then after this, kind of the focus shifts to indoors and trying to make the U.S. team for World Indoor Championships. Um, I'll probably run the 3K for that. Uh, and then from there, obviously, the big goal this year is the Olympic team. And um, the Olympic team in which event? Uh, likely the 5K. Uh, I did the 5K last year. I like it. As I'm getting older, I kind of get pushed up a little bit farther. And so, uh, especially at championships where I think a lot of the races turn into, in the U.S., like a 5K will turn into more of a 1,500-meter race just because everybody jogs for a while. Uh, and then it comes down to the pace picking up later on. Uh, I think that suits me a little bit better. So probably the 5k. Uh, I don't want to rule out the 1500 yet since I've been in that for a long time, but uh, I think the 5k is most likely. The competition in 5k is not easy, yeah? I mean, in no. any event, it's not, no, it's not no, easy. No, no, it's not at all. In fact, probably to, in Olympic events, it's sometimes different. It's uh, the strategy issue and so on, but if you go to, I don't know, um, uh, like uh, Diamond League events and so on, when the time is pressing, mm -hmm. these guys are running below 13. Yep. What are the advantages that you can find in your training, in your body, that you think that you can still push on and tune so that you can, mm -hmm. you know, progress to this 13 minutes? Yeah, I think yeah. my biggest upside is I've focused on the 1500 for so long that there's a lot more that can be done in the aerobic side of things, going toward, you know, doing more mileage, um, doing more strength-based stuff. Yes, but then don't you feel depressed that when you look at Mo Farah, he can run a th <coughs> uh, 328? Yeah, it is depressing. <laughs> uh, he's a, he's a tough man to beat. You know, he's got the PRs at all distances. But, well, but he's, he's an exception. Yes, he uh, is an I, exception. But uh, you know, I feel like uh, I've run you know three thirty four a few times now, um, which is a good enough speed, I think, in the five k to be ready to close with just about anybody. Like Mo's got a faster fifteen hundred PB, but hopefully you get to the end of a race and. You know, everybody's a little bit more tired, and you know, you maybe don't have to be a three, 328, 1500 person, but, but you've got to be able to close in 50 seconds, you know. You cannot decide if you're going to run or not. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to decide <laughs> if I want to wear spikes or uh, just.
do my last, I think I might just do my last couple strides on the road again. Uh -huh. To uh, put the spikes on. I think it's just it's a little soft, like in order to get like good quality strides. In. The one thing that I've done in the last year or two that's a little bit different is I've done a lot more stuff in the weight room. So I'd never done anything in the weight room before, and I think uh, that's been useful in. Uh, boosting that explosiveness, that last gear, that turnover, because you, you're able to work on some of that like really explosive movements doing some lifts uh, that you otherwise wouldn't be able to really exaggerate just running. Um, so I've been doing some of that, but otherwise, like honestly, I've seen, uh, been lucky to see a lot of like just kind of gradual improvement over time. And you know, I know a lot of people don't improve. No, no, yeah, I'm 30, really but, but, but like, you know, it's yeah. like I've, I've been the time is, um, right. I've been happy to stopped, happy yeah. to see you see it go up. And I think uh, last year, I you know, I felt good running a 13, 16 at Peyton Jordan, but I felt like I was ready to run faster, just kind of the way the race played out. And, um, but I think there's a lot more in the tank there. And so hopefully this year, uh, put myself in a, in a position to have a chance to run another fast one or two and hopefully drop that PR and get closer to 13 minutes. So. I know that I can't compete with anybody out there. Um, I mean, I guess I already know that in the back of my mind, but sometimes seeing some of those times come down helps kind of justify that uh, even a little bit more. I may test it out for a couple yeah. of spikes. I, I really like the strength, strength training, and so for me that means like doing hills in the fall, doing a lot of tempo work. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean tempo work? Uh, so for us that would mean like going on some uh, we go as long as 10 mile progressive tempos, uh, you know, starting near 5.30 and progressing down below five minutes. Uh, but sometimes, you know, but because tempo in American school is something different than for Yeah, example, so tempo, I, I guess, like, especially for me and a lot of Americans, it's a pretty broad term that, like, I used to describe anything from running, like, for me, I guess, near five minute about 5.30 pace all the way down to, like, 4.40, uh -huh. 4.35 pace. And so it, it doesn't... I guess when I say tempo work, I'm more describing um, longer sustained efforts uh, off the track. And so whether that's a long progressive run that goes from, you know, starting at 5.30 down to that 4.40 or running a five minutes for 10 miles um, or something where we're running repeat miles or repeat Ks with short rest. So it's, uh, it's just kind of, it's more of a longer sustained effort as opposed to taking like big rests between intervals and trying to run faster and um, do some like either pace type work for mile or 3K, like that wouldn't fall under the tempo category. Uh, right now is about as high as I get. Uh, and I get up to mid 80s to 90 miles a week. Um, so not crazy high. Um, Have you done uh, more in your uh, career? No, I guess I've, uh, I've never actually hit 90 uh, for an 89 miles before, as the most I've done in a week. But uh, when you started running around 90, did you feel, uh, I mean, was it difficult to, uh, to your body? Uh, I, you can start to feel a little bit more tired, but I think uh, it was, so far it's been kind of a sweet spot to stay right around there just with the intensity of training that we've been doing and trying to throw in some uh, auxiliary stuff between weights and drills and core and you, when you feel uh, tired uh, do you uh, something does it happen what's your uh, strategy do you think that the training must be done anyway or you prefer to back up because uh, you, you want to uh, rest yeah i think uh, i've early in my career i would have just run right through it uh, and probably broken down, but at this point, like, uh, I've started to at least know my body and what I need a little bit more, and so if I do start to feel tired, I'll back off. Uh, if I feel good some days, maybe I'll go a little bit harder, um, and that's been one thing that's been pretty nice uh, with Danny and I at practice going back and forth is, you know, making changes on the spot. Like, if, if I'm not feeling good or feeling tired, maybe I'll drop an interval or two uh, to make sure that you know, kind of get the effort that we want out of the workouts. It's more about getting the effort as opposed to getting the specific intervals in. Um, and then if it's a if it's a good day and I feel great, like you know, maybe we'll add something on at the end or do the last interval a little bit harder to kind of work on picking it up and getting a little more turnover in. So. Garrett Provaj, oh she's no.
I guess our stress test is basically just running, and so you, after you run enough miles, you, you kind of get a feel for how your body responds to those miles and how your body, you know, right out the door I'll have a good idea. You know, some days you can tell if you feel the difference between feeling tired where you can kind of like push through it, it's just like a little bit of soreness, or if it's the tired, like your body is fatigued and you need to take a little bit easier. You are a professional athlete, but then it means that you are sponsored by someone, yes? That's, yep. So who is your main sponsor? Uh, Brooks, Brooks, Brooks Running. Yep. So, so they're based out of Seattle and they sponsor our whole team. Are you um, interested in all these uh, technical issues that comes with the shoe business, or for tomorrow? Do you know what kind of shoes will you use for the race tomorrow? So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I've worn the mocks, the Brook mock, mock spikes here uh, every year so far, and I'm, I'm going to wear them again tomorrow. Uh, they're kind of our cross country spike. Here we go, and uh, got excited. <laughs> When uh, Garrett speeded up, didn't you feel that uh, you have to keep strong behind him, or it was just a moment and it... he was just strong? He was strong. He was just passing off the ground and just. Oh, okay. If you come to the race like this, you feel you, the fear that comes with such a race is because the other guys are so strong, or because you know that this is a difficult race and you will uh, fight with yourself. Mm -hmm. um... I think a lot of it comes up because a lot of the other guys are so strong. I mean, it's a great field. Um, obviously, having Mo here this year makes it an even better field. Um, but yeah, that's one of the cool parts about this meet is they always bring in like a ton of great athletes. So it makes it more exciting for the fans and it makes it a little more stressful as an athlete, but it also makes it more exciting to be out there racing and it feels a little bit more like a championship level meet because there are so many good guys running, you know, and the UK obviously values this meet. Was it the first time you beat Mo in a direct uh, competition? Yeah, of course. It's a hard man to beat. I like to think I have some advantages on this course. Uh, <clears throat> partially probably from growing up in Minnesota in the cold and the snow and uh, also just loving cross country and kind of growing up as a cross country guy. Um, but you never know. I mean, I think some of it's probably just mental as much as anything. Um, and so... Uh, I love being out there, I love being in these races, and so I guess if you love doing it, then it probably gives you a little bit of an edge more than uh, you would if you otherwise didn't like it. So, uh, it's hard to say, I mean, I think my stride probably as a heel striker probably is a little bit better in uh, the mud than being up on your toes the whole way, but. I mean, I'm not an 8K runner, so I was kind of waiting to feel it out a little bit. Uh, especially with the mud, I didn't want to go too too hard from the start, so I was kind of hanging back. And I knew Callum, the uh, guy from GB, uh, was a little bit more of a marathon guy, so he kind of started pushing it and was happy to kind of tuck back for a while. So it was definitely hard, uh, the legs, especially going up those steep hills. Hat. <laughs> Give me one. I'll get my number signed. You okay there, boys? Thank you. From Team USA, Scott Fobble. In second place, and a time of 25.31, representing Great Britain, Mo Farah. For a third time, the 2016 Great Edinburgh Cross Country Men's Champion in 25-29 from the USA, Garrett Heath. <laughs> well, a wonderful, exciting race to finish. And you do not want to miss that. We'll see you back here in April for the Great Edinburgh 10 Miler.